Now then crew and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. This is the next episode in the epic saga of getting the Honda CB750K2 all finished and back up to Allen in Auckland when re COVID restrictions permit, obviously. Now, I've already fitted a new or the new front tyre to the front wheel, obviously. And believe it or not, it's also in the correct rotational direction, which I'm well known for putting them on the wrong way around. So I double checked. <laughs> That's honestly terrible. Um, so we get to use the brand new Turing stand. And I'm going to show you how to do a static wheel balance. Now, a static, static means a single weight down the center line of the wheel. Dynamic balancing, like you get on cars and wider tire, wider rims and stuff, uh, you have weights on the inside and the outside of a, a car wheel because they have to be dynamically balanced. Most motorcycles don't need to be dynamically balanced. Static balancing is just fine. One of the motorcycles I am aware of that requires dynamic balancing is the Yamaha Nikon. Awesome machine, it's got two front wheels. Those front wheels, both of them need to be independently balanced and dynamically balanced. Hey, it's just one of those things that I know. Right, if you've got your own, your own uh, wheel balancing stand, then great, you'll probably know how to do this. If you haven't, then you could probably make something up pretty easily with some box section, a few bearings and bolts and bits and pieces. But we need to run through the best procedure on actually setting the stand up so you can balance the wheel correctly. Here we go. Used. Now, on all good static wheel balancers like this one, uh, there should be a bullseye level. And it's important that the stand is actually level and it it's, doesn't rock around on the bench. So let's get that set up first. You'll find that there'll be some, um, some adjustable feet on each corner. Now, the bullseye is pretty much in the center is the bubble. Um, it's within that black ring, which means it's okay to use. But I have to move this stand across the bench before I can actually do the balancing. In which case, it's probably going to move and we'll need to adjust it. Hmm, it's still a bit out. I'll show you how to adjust it up. So, looking at the bubble, <laughs> the bubble is almost at the edge of the circle just here, which means that over here, the corner that's in this direction here needs to, uh, to go down, or the corner that's opposite, Katie corner, opposite, needs to go up. Well, that one's already on full adjustment, so I'm going to head over here to this side, to this corner, and adjust that down a little bit. It's a bit fiddly, but it does need to be done. If you're going to make your own stand, then you do also need to have adjustable feet on it, so you can do this kind of thing. Right, I'm going to do two things at once here. We're getting pretty close. How's that? Oh, it's good enough to me. It's not touching any of the black now. Perfect. Now, with the wheel balancing stand comes this shaft. And on the shaft are a couple of tapered um, bosses, I suppose you'd call them, uh, for mounting the wheels central to the shaft. These cones go into each of the wheel bearings you know, on the inner race. There's also a couple of stops here to stop the shaft from moving around too much. Uh, they act as guides against the bearings on the stand itself. So, let's get the wheel and we'll fit this. Now, on the CB750, I've already removed the axle from the hub. You don't have to take the wheel out, by the way. And uh, now it's time to install this. So, I'm just going to remove two of the bits from the axle. That's one, two, there we go. Okay, now this goes in, doesn't matter which side it goes in from, pop it through there. And then what I do is I then put the wheel down on the table and fit the other two pieces. That way it keeps everything nice and tight and it's easy to work with. 
pop that down there. Make sure it's it's all the way in on the bearing. See it just drop down then, and then we'll keep some pressure on it and nip it up. There we go. Easy. This one we can't set the position till it's back in the stand, but we'll just pop it on there. And now somewhere around about there, look, and we'll just lock it off gingerly. And then we can pop the wheel in the stand. Once the wheel's in the stand, just slide the axle across until this stopper is a couple of mil away from these bearings. And then we can adjust the stopper at the other side. Where's the grub screw? There he is, look. Right, again, we'll just leave about maybe, I don't know, a millimeter, two millimeters of clearance. And the reason for these stoppers, and they are quite important, is it prevents other parts of the stand, like this bit here that's used for truing, um, it doesn't catch on the rim itself. If it does, then you're gonna have to start all over again, basically. Now, I know this is really obvious, but it doesn't always happen. It's really important that you remove all the old wheel weights before you try and balance a wheel. I've seen people leave the old weights on, especially on car wheels, and try and rebalance it. All you end up doing is loading the whole thing up with extra weights that it doesn't need. It's stupid. So just check around the rim and make sure there's no weights on. If there is, take them off. Uh, on these old spoked wheels, they would often use uh, a lead type crimp weight, which just basically crimped around one of the spokes. Um, I've got these. These look quite posh, so I ordered these. These are a brass type weight, and again, they're held on with a little grub screw. And we'll see a bit more about these when we come to fit one. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we've got to spin the wheel, so we'll do that. Not too fast, just a little bit, about that kind of speed, and then you've got to wait for it to stop. It's as easy as that. Now, you're also going to need, usually we'd use chalk, but I haven't got any of that. You can use one of those yellow wax marky things for tyres. I haven't got one of those either. What I have got is a marker pen. And as long as you've got some method of marking a position, uh, either on the rim or on the tyre, that's absolutely fine. And you can always, you're going to have to clean it off at the end anyway. But we need to know what the highest point is. And when this rim comes to a rest, obviously the heaviest point will be at the bottom. The lightest point, or the point opposite that, will be at the top. And that's what we need to mark, the 12 o'clock position once the wheel has stopped turning. Once the wheel has stopped turning. It's obviously got very good bearings as this new, uh, this new wheel balancing stand. Once the wheel has stopped turning. We could be here for a while. Notice it's the bearings on the stand that are turning and not the hub bearings. So you're not relying on the hub bearings being really free for movement. The idea is, you know, those just remain locked. These bearings are good. Now, one thing I didn't mention earlier on is you do need to check the wheel bearings in the hub itself. They can't have any play and they need to be in good condition because now is the time to change them. You can't balance a wheel when the wheel bearings have got play. So now will be the time to change those, you know, before you fit the tire and, and, and do the wheel balance. You could probably go away and have a cup of tea while this is happening. I remember when I was balancing wheels in the workshop, when I used to work on the tools, uh, often, you know, we'd go off and do something for two or three minutes, you know, balance another wheel or, or fit another tire, whilst this one would be stopping. It's still going. I've even had time to move the camera and it's still going. Oh, we're coming back. We're coming back. Now I did do this earlier on, I put a mark on it. Can you spot the mark? It's on there somewhere. I was just curious to see if it was gonna stop in exactly the same place for the second time. It's always a good idea to do it two or three times and mark it each time. If it lands in the same place every time, it means that you haven't really got any resistance in your bearings. If you're finding it's stopping in different positions every time, then you've got an issue with the bearings. Probably the bearings on the stand. They do wear out, get dust in them, stop working properly. Have too much resistance, that's the problem. Right, come on wheel, you can stop now whenever you're ready. 
almost there. It's like watching paint dry, isn't it? But it's important that you don't touch the wheel again until it comes completely to rest. This is where the accuracy comes in. Right, it has stopped. Yes, it's stopped. So we're going to put a mark at the 12 o'clock position, which is exactly the same place as the last mark. Excellent. So we have a choice. We've got to choose the nearest spoke. This one's pretty much equidistant between this spoke and the one at the back, but it is slightly closer to this one. Uh, on your <laughs> on the camera, it looks like it's directly above, but it's not. If I bring my finger perpendicular to the rim, that's where it finishes. And for this spoke, that's where that one finishes. So it is slightly closer to this spoke. So I'm going to mark that spoke just for the hell of it. Just so you can see. Maybe I should have used a white marker, shouldn't I? Okay. Now, you can bring that down now because we've got the datum point. Here we go. Look, it's coming around now. There we are. Right. I'm going to actually switch to a white marker so you can see better on the on the screen. That's the spoke we're going to fit the fit the weight to, and that was the mark there on the rim, which was the number twelve o'clock position. Now, before we fit a weight on, we need to have a make a decision as to what size weight to fit. Now, it's always a bit of a gamble what size weight to fit, but it's sort of based a little bit on how aggressively that wheel you know, comes to rest. If it takes ages to slow down, then it's more likely it's going to be a smaller weight that you need to fit if it basically rocks with a bit more aggression uh, and, and comes to a halt, then there's more of a weight differential on the rim and you're probably going to end up fitting a larger weight. Now, I haven't opened this bag yet, so we'll have a look inside, eh? Now, these are made by Noma, Motorcycle Noma, tyre changer, it says there, look, I think, on that sticker. Brass spoke weights, 8-piece kit, 8 ounces, 0.23 kilograms. Made in the US of A. It's got number 8, and that says BR, whatever the hell they mean. Right, so let's have a look. Like I said, not used these before. I spotted them. Thought, well, in fact, I was trying to find the old lead weights, and I couldn't find them anywhere. I'm sure Simon Rowe will tell me where I can get them from. Although, they just don't seem to exist here in New Zealand, unfortunately. So there's different sizes. Uh, obviously, the height will denote the weight. Uh, so we've got some big ones, a couple of big ones there, look. And that one will fit in there. And we've got two little ones okay well what should we start with let's start with that one the beauty of these is they're reusable so you can put one on if it's not right you can go up a size or down a size so I'm gonna pick this one and we'll see where we end up where's my mark oh, it's come back to the top again look right there we go okay so inside these particular wheel weight I'd really like to have the the, the um, the lead ones here to show you as well, but I don't have any. Uh, but inside the wheel weights, there is obviously a larger diameter at one end and a smaller at the other. And it's the larger diameter that goes over the nipple of the spoke. So we'll put that over there, look. That drops down. And you even get a free Allen key with these. It's great. Very impressed. And we'll stick that on there. It's going to look very smart, isn't it? Right. So that's now in place. What should we do? Well, let's give it another spin, eh? It's like watching a wheel go around this, isn't it? So, if we've overcooked the weight, that weight will now end up at the bottom. Which, of course, you can't see on the camera, so I'll move it. There you go, look. Where's it going to end up? It's like roulette. Is it roulette where you spin the wheel? I think it is, isn't it? It's going round again. Ah, good. Where is it going to go? Is it going to end up right at the top again? You're be very patient doing this. The more patient you are, the more accurate you're going to get it. 
So we've stopped nearly at the top, which tells me it, the weight needs to be slightly heavier because another good check is we move the wheel around to different locations and it starts to move on its own. Then again, that weight isn't heavy enough. I'll try it around this side here, look. And you'll see that it's starting to move upwards again. There you go. Only slowly though. Now obviously there's a limit to how accurate we can get this based on the weights that we have available. But what we'll do is we'll go to the next size up see if that cures the problem. If it ends up moving quicker, then we're going to have to go back to this particular weight. There he is. Look at that. No waste at all. Okay, next size is going on. There we go. Right, we'll do the same test again, where I'm going to move the wheel to different positions. I used to do like 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and uh, 9 o'clock. And if it maintained a set position in each of those places, then I was usually pretty happy. So, where's it going to go? Oh, is it... Okay, it's held that position. That's cool. So we'll go around to 9 o'clock as you're looking on the camera. There we go. Up to 12 o'clock. Is it going to hold 12 o'clock? It is. And then we're going to stick it right down at 6 o'clock and see if it stays there as well. That's pretty good, isn't it? Right. I'm going to mark that weight just with a letter. So you know I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, you know, pulling your leg. We'll put an A on there. And we're going to go up one size more to see what happens. Not that it's going to balance the wheel, but it's going to highlight the, uh, the problem if you have too heavy a weight. In fact, let's put the heaviest one on, just for the hell of it. Which I think is the next one up anyway. This is the largest one we've got. Right, where's my me, where's me spoke gone? There he is. Okay. So we'll stick that on there. Dum dum dum, tighten up the lock nuts. I do like these disposable weights. And they're pretty, uh, sorry, non disposable weights. There we go. Right, let's try again. So I'll spin it round to uh, what is my nine o'clock. Make sure, you, make sure it's dead still before you let go. There we go. So you can see it's starting to go down. Only just though, to be fair, but it is moving down, which means that that weight is too heavy. So we'll spin it around to the three o'clock and see if it does the same again. It is. So again, too heavy. I'll stick it up at 12. Doesn't know where to go. I'll stick it just to one side slightly. There we go, look. And again, we've got movement. Very, very slow movement, but we have got movement. So I would suggest that the ideal weight is in between these two. Now, sure, I could chuck it in the lathe and take a little bit off this one, but in all honesty, I think it'll be just fine. So we'll stick on the previous weight because it was stationary with that one. Right, let's get rid of that. I can go back into stock. And we'll stick back on weight A, which we know is about the best of the bunch. There we go, look. Give it a good tweak this time. Right, so one final check just to verify, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be good now. I'm very happy with it. 
Yep, stationary. Oh, it's nine o'clock. Stationary. Twelve o'clock. Stationary. And down to six o'clock. Stationary. Woohoo! It's balanced. I do like watching it spin around. It's fun, isn't it? Well, a short video to show you how to do static balancing on a motorcycle wheel. Now, obviously, you're going to need some weights to do this, and you can get those uh, reusable weights that I got for, for Alan's bike, which I think are actually really, really cool. Uh, I was a bit dubious when I first got them, but I can see the point of them now. Um, the old lead weights, well, they were just like a crimp on around the nipple. They worked just fine, but they weren't. They didn't look particularly nice. Uh, and nowadays, a lot of tyre shops here in New Zealand, at least, will just use the stick-on weights onto the motorcycle rim. They look nasty. I'm sorry, but they, they have no place on an old classic bike, for sure. And obviously on the, on the mag wheels, you've got no choice on the aluminium wheels. But um, on spoke wheels, that's the wrong kind of weight, in my opinion. You should be using one around a spoke. Okay, crew, well, if you enjoyed this video, why not click on the subscribe button? You'll see a little gear icon turn up. Click on that, and then you can turn on notifications, and that way you're not going to miss out on any of the future videos that hit the channel. If you're on a, you know, a smart device, you just ring the bell, and that way it does the same thing. Now, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Feel free to communicate through any of those portals. Uh, my email address is down the bottom in the description, and you, of course you can email me too if you like. I'll do my very best to get back to you, but I am a pretty busy chap. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, and you know, hopefully you found this video interesting and helpful and it solved a problem that you had, um, then why not support the channel financially? You can do that through Patreon or through PayPal. If it's PayPal, then again, it's the same email address, andymechanic at live.co.uk. Okay, crew, well, I've got to crack on with this bike. I've got the, um, well, the front wheels put back in and a heap of wiring to do. I'll catch you later. Cheers. Over and out. Thank <laughs> you.